In this discussion, I'm going to look at the upper layers of the OSI model for data communications. From the graphics, you can see that this involves three layers, the application layer, the presentation layer, and the session layer. Each layer has a unique purpose in moving information uh, between people who use network devices, such as a computer, on a data network. The objectives of this unit are listed here. In this tutorial, we're going to look at uh, the application layer as a source and destination for data uh, information flowing across a network. And in particular, we'll not only look at the application layer, but also the presentation layer and also the session layer. And these are defined in the OSI model. In future presentations, we'll look at the role uh, of protocols between server and client processes. For instance, if we have a web server and we'll have a web client, uh, such as Chrome, some browser, then we'll look at the protocols that are involved in getting information uh, between the server and the client. We'll also describe some of the more well-known TCP IP application level services, such as HTTP, used in web services, uh, DNS, DHCP, Telnet, SSH. As I say, we'll describe those in later presentations. As a review, the collective software that provides features for all these layers is called the protocol stack. In Windows, this software resides in one software component called winsock.dll. And this is a file in the operating system. Uh, a DLL is a shared software component um, that any application in the Windows operating system can use. It's also called a library file. So we're going to start by looking at the functions provided by the application layer. And as shown here, the application layer interfaces with people. It provides processes for sending and receiving information on our smartphone, uh, computers, and any other uh, network device that's connected to a uh, computer network. Let's suppose I launch a web browser on my computer. And let's suppose I try to go to a web page, so I'll type in a URL and I'll hit the enter button. At this point, the application layer, my OSI uh, software, is going to interface with the computer and with the web browser, and it's going to format uh, that request in a way that can be understood by layers underneath of it. And eventually, uh, that data is reformatted so that it can be sent out onto the network to a web server. That information is going to come back. It's going to be uh, decoded as in changed as it moves up the uh, protocol stack. The information is going to go up to the application layer, which then formats it in a way that the web browser can understand it, and the web browser is going to then display the web page. So this application layer is sort of the interface between the software and the hardware and indirectly uh, through the person using the application. In both the OSI uh, model and the TCP model, the application layer is the top layer of the model. But you'll notice in the TCP model that it performs more functions. And in particular, it also performs functions that are done by the presentation and session layer of the OSI model. So we'll look at what those uh, functions are. The presentation layer is responsible for any encoding or decoding uh, that needs to be done on data that's sent over the network. In particular, uh, two things it's responsible for are encryption and compression. So I may want to encrypt data uh, so that it's more secure, can't be um, read or intercepted by hackers. I may want to compress information. This is uh, particularly important over cell networks. If I have a cell network and I can compress data, I'm actually sending less data. 
Why is that important? Well, I may be charged less. So it may save me money, but it can also save what's called bandwidth. That is, I can send more information if it's compressed than if it's non-compressed. So a, a cell channel might be able to uh, send more data from more, uh, from more customers. The session layer is responsible for all the tasks related to maintaining a data communication link, but not the data that's flowing uh, itself. So what does this mean? It means it sets up the communication link. It makes sure the data is flowing properly, and if there are any errors, um, some of the data may be retransmitted. And finally, it'll end the link when the communication session is over. No matter which model we talk about here, we talk about the software uh, of both these models being contained in something, being referred to as something called the protocol stack. In Windows, this was contained in uh, a specific library file called WinSock, and that's common in any operating system. But sometimes some of these functions are provided not in the protocol stack, but in a different place, in actually the application itself. So if we look at an application like a web browser, A web browser may actually encrypt information in that application itself. We don't do the encryption actually in the protocol stack software. Uh, an example of this is in providing something called a secure or SSL communications. And we do this when we're processing things like credit cards that need to be ultra secure. So, although we break out these functions in nice, neat little layers, it is possible for some of the functions of these layers to be done elsewhere. Uh, and in particular, often they're done, some of these functions are done in applications themselves. So don't think that uh, it's a nice, neat little layered uh, model in which all these functions are always done in the protocol stack. They can be done in different, uh, different parts of the operating system software or the application software. But as a model for learning about networks, it's uh, easiest to understand how network communications uh, work when we look at this a nice, neat, layered model.